All right, we are gonna use the paint blowing technique to make some trees. Um, I'm using acrylic paint. Tempera also works great for this, but you do wanna water it down at least by half. You want it to be about the consistency of milk. As you can see, I put a pretty good sized puddle on my page. You don't want that puddle to be any bigger than you want your tree trunk to be wide though. So, um, you know, maybe make it a little bit oval shaped if you don't want a wide trunk. And you can see that I've just started to blow it up the page. You want to keep your um, straw at a pretty low angle so you're blowing in the direction that you want the paint to go. And then turn that page as much as you need to to blow the paint wherever you need. It'll make it easier to blow it. Um, you can see that as the paint gets to the end and you kind of run out of paint, it thins out and makes little fine branches, which looks great for these trees. They always turn out really fun and interesting looking. See how I'm just coaxing the paint up? It kind of forms gutters along the edge, which also looks great when it's done. It gives it a barky look. Now I'm going to turn the page around before it gets too dry at the bottom and give it some gnarly roots. You can see that I just turn the page as I go, making sure to blow again in the direction that I want the paint to go. You don't want to blow right from on top. Now I'm not going to add any background to my tree and I think they look awesome just alone on the page. But if you're a little artist or you want to, you can certainly add in some grass or maybe a nice watercolor wash for the sky. Whatever, go crazy. I like to do this on a bigger piece of paper. You can get um, 14 by 24 craft paper at the craft store and it works great for something like this. You want to have a little bit more room than an average piece of cardstock. You can see I'm just blowing up to the edges and it's giving me some good little thin branches. And now you can keep this going as long as you want. You can fill up your whole page, which looks fantastic. Um, but I've got enough here for the purposes of our demonstration. I'm going to show you now how we would add leaves or spring blossoms to that. Um, I'm going to take my paintbrush and just kind of press on the edges of the bristles right down next to the barrel to make the, bris the brush a little more jagged so that it gives the leaves a little bit more of a textured look. And then I just dip it into the green paint and um, stipple it onto the page. Just press down lightly and quickly on the page. And again, when you need to, just go ahead and press those bristles to make sure that they stay kind of interestingly shaped. They don't get too round again. Now the best, um, the best way to do this from here is to kind of make your leaves have a little bit of a branch shape to them. You can see how I'm kind of going so the tree has a shape. It's not just a round glob, although if you want that, of course, that's fine too. But it kind of give it, gives it the appearance that there are branches underneath those leaves you just can't see. And now I'm going to add in a few apples by using my finger um, in the paint, just dipping it in the paint and then dipping it onto the page. This looks great with little fingers. All right, on the other side, I'm going to show you how to do spring blossoms. And again, I'm just going to dip my little finger into the paint and dot it onto the page. Um, I'm using my pinky because I have big, you know, grown up hands. But when kids do this, it looks great no matter what finger they, look, they use. You can change the diameter of the blossoms by pressing lightly or hard or how much paint you have on your finger. And it's fun to kind of play with that and get a bunch of variety in there. These trees are a great activity for any age. Three or four year olds um, make a messy, chaotic, fun thing, and then teenagers have fun trying to learn to control them. So give it a try a few times, you'll get addicted to it too. It's great. <laughs>